Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we just thank you. We thank you for your great grace that has been poured out on all mankind. We thank you for, for the prophecy that you have said that, that your glory will cover the earth as the waters cover the sea. Hallelujah. We thank you that uh, you, Jesus has set up a kingdom that cannot be moved. His kingdom is forever. And we thank you that it is expanding and expanding and expanding and filling up the earth. Father, we thank you that uh, we, we do not believe um, the world's headlines. We believe your headlines. And uh, we just rest in the finished work of Jesus Christ this morning. As, uh, as Alicia said, we, just go, we go from grace to grace, to faith to faith, to glory to glory. And that is what the earth is, is waiting for. They're, it's waiting for, for, the, for the sons and daughters of God to be manifest in the earth, that the, the glory would be revealed. Hallelujah. So we just uh, we enter in this morning by faith, and we take hold of the throne of grace this morning, and we receive mercy and grace in our time of need. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. So we've been in a uh, discussion about what it means to be led by the Spirit, and we find out, found out that it's a mindset. It's what you set your mind on. When I was younger, um, I, I don't know, I can't, five, six, seven years old, I was at a, uh, a, a church camp, and uh, there was a salvation message preached, and I went up and uh, received Jesus Christ as my Savior. The next night, there was a salvation message preached, and I went up and received Jesus Christ as my Savior. Now, although you're sitting there, well, that's cute. But that's the same thing us adults have been doing year after year after year, going to the cross, asking God to forgive us for our sins. And to understand, it's necessary to go to the cross. That's the door into the kingdom. We need our sins forgiven. But there is no life at the cross. The cross is death. It was the death of Jesus Christ. And in the Spirit, it was the death of you. And we have gathered around that cross and haven't moved from the cross to the throne room. We are not saved through the cross. <gasps> We're forgiven through the cross. We are saved by the living Lord, the King of Kings, that raised from the dead three days later, and from that throne now empowers us by the Spirit to live through Him. And what that little boy didn't know, going up night after night, knowing the revelation of needing to be forgiven of his sins, he did not know how, he was never taught how to live. Because you've been translated. You've been translated from a king. It's not even a kingdom, it's a dominion of darkness. Because he's, he's no king. Jesus is king of kings. He is Lord of lords. We have been translated from a dominion, one dominion, into a kingdom, a new, completely new way of living. But the problem is, is that we go from a new, into a new kingdom, but we go in operating in the old one. We think the same way. We act the same way. We expect the same things. That's why God has been made out to be such a monster. It's because we came out of a kingdom that we served a monster. We need to learn how to live life in the Spirit and no longer be held captive by that fallen, endemic nature that we've been delivered from. And that's what this series has been all of, is, is all about. Um, and, and we talked about how it's a mindset because when you're born again, um, one-third of you becomes wall-to-wall -wall Holy Ghost. One-third of you is trans... It's, it's, uh, becomes a new creation in Christ Jesus. Old things have passed away. That's that death. All things have become new. That's that life. So in, in you, in your spirit, you, you have the very spirit of Jesus Christ. It says in the, in the word of God that we are one spirit with him. One, singular. Think about that. The spirit of God is your spirit. We have been made one with him. We've been married with him. We've been baptized, submerged into, welded together. 
God is never going to divorce you. He's never going to leave you. He's never going to forsake you. That is such good news. So your spirit is connected to the spirit of God. And he is constantly flowing that, the rivers of living water into your spirit. The life of God is constantly flowing into your spirit. But the issue is, is that that's just a part of you. You need to get that life to flow over into your soul, your mind, will, and emotions. you got to get that, that life to flow over into your body. Right? So how do we do that? We're changing our minds by flipping the switch. We talked about, was it last week? I think so. So what does it mean to have your mind set on the things of the Spirit? What does it mean to have your mind set on the things of the Spirit? Does that mean, we, we talked about this, do, does it mean that you sit in the lotus position and hum something, hum sh show tunes or whatever they, they do? Is it wearing your collar backwards? Is it taking a vow of silence? Is, it, is that what it means to be spiritual? Does it mean to just um, be in a trance and um, walk around like a, like a weirdo? Is that what it means to be spiritual? You know, Jesus was the most spiritual person that ever walked the earth, and no one said, man, he's weird. Jesus was the most spiritual person. So to be spiritual, we've got to act like Jesus. So how, how do, how, what, what does it mean to be spiritual? What it means to set your mind on the things that, of the Spirit. It is when you're, you set your thinking on things that are true in the spiritual realm. Jesus says, I don't do anything that my father's not doing. I don't say anything that I don't hear my father saying. So what was he saying? He's saying, I dictate my way of life by a different kingdom, a different realm that is not of this realm. I set my mind on things that are true in that realm, in the spiritual realm. Because you know that... You, that you're living, apart from Jesus Christ, we're all living a lie. Because God has already given us how this thing whole, all ends. He has already dictated from the very beginning. Jesus Christ was the Lamb of God slain before the foundations of the earth. D do you know that things that you think are true about life, you think that the way the world is going, guess what? If it doesn't line up with Scripture, you're living a lie. You can have things that seem so real in your life, but if they don't line up with what is true in the Spirit, it's a lie. We can't know the spiritual realm. You can't know the spiritual realm through our physical senses. It only comes through the revelation of the Word of God and by Holy Spirit. When we have our minds set on God, we are kept in shalom, shalom. The perfect peace of God. We are kept in his salvation. We are no longer slaves to this world, but we can walk in victory through a spirit, spirit-led life. You know, there's, there's some things that, uh, I'm not going to go into great detail, but there's things that has happened in my life just shortly that I, could, I, could, I was tempted to take as negative. I, I was tempted to... to um, be pessimistic. I was tempted. Do you know something? Anything that happens in your life, we should rejoice in. Even when it's, it, it doesn't look like it's a good thing. Well, I don't understand that, Chad. That's because you are more focused on, and I was tempted to be more focused on, what was happening in this realm rather than what is true in the spiritual realm. In the spiritual realm, it says that God works all things together for my good. So when something bad happens to me, guess what? That's, I can rejoice. Why? Because God works all things together for my good. To those that love him and are called by his name. I've been called by his name. And, and, and I, try to, I love him with the same love that Christ loved me. I love him back in the spirit. My, my spirit is so in love with God. See, that's another thing. You, you guys don't think you keep the greatest commandment. Do you love God with all your heart, soul, and mind, and strength? 
in your spirit you do. You've been made perfect. You've been made whole. You've been, you're holy. You're a spiritual people. See, we were, we're, more, we're more focused on natural things than we are on spiritual things. And when we become more focused on the spiritual realm than the natural realm, our natural realm will start lining up with the spiritual realm. You get this? See, this is why it's so important where we set our minds. We have been conditioned our whole lives to have a mindset on the natural world, and it, it takes a while to reprogram ourselves. You need to reboot. Do you know your mind is nothing more than, let's just use an example of like a hard, hard board in a, in a computer. You know a computer's no good unless you have software put into it? A computer has no value. It's a boat anchor. If you use, well, we can use our boats now. But um, it's, it's, a, uh, it's a boat anchor without any software in it. So if you download the right software, a computer can do awesome things. But far too often, the software that we've downloaded into our minds has a virus. It's corrupt. And it doesn't give us the right data. It doesn't work the way it's supposed to work. And it becomes frustrating. So we need to reprogram our computers. We need to get an update, right? I go to PC to Mac and, and, and uh, reprogram our minds with the mind of Christ that is already ours in our spirit. Because the, the, that is where the battle is won. Your battle is lost or won in, in this natural realm in your mind. Right? You've already won it in the spiritual realm. You know, there, there's going to come a day. There's going to come a day that when Jesus is going to come back to earth and it says we will be transformed in a twinkling of eye, we will be just like him. We will see him and say, oh, that's what we're supposed to be like. Boom! And we're like him. But some of us won't have as much to transfer as others. Because why? Because we're already seeing ourselves of how we are in the spirit. We must know how to walk in the spirit. If the law of the spirit of life is ever going to flow from our spirits into our souls and our bodies. Look at how the Holy Spirit uses a little different phrasing in Colossians than we've seen in Romans. Of what it means to walk in the spirit. See, this, is, this isn't just, we started in Ephesians, or Galatians, right? We started in Galatians. It says, walk in the spirit and you will not gratify the lusts of the flesh. Well, that's great, Paul. It's great. You told us how not to gratify the lust of the flesh by walking in the Spirit. But what does it mean to walk in the Spirit? Then we went to Romans, the first time in the New Testament that talks about what it means to walk in the Spirit. And we got our definition of what it means to walk in the Spirit from Romans, which is what we set our minds on. We either set our minds on the things of the Spirit that lead to life or we're in godliness, or we're setting our minds on the things of the flesh that lead to death. Right? But it's just not in Romans. It's just this. This is called the, the the new reality. This is how we're supposed to live. So it would come. It would, it would come to um, reason that Paul would be teaching the same concept in most of his letters, right? So in Colossians, look at what it says here. In Colossians chapter three, verse one, it says. If then you have been raised with Christ. Have you been raised with Christ? If you've been raised with Christ, this, this rest of this is for you. Seek the things that are above. Where Christ is. Seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things that are above. Not on things that are on the earth. Now, understand, and we talked about this last week. This isn't, this isn't saying that we forsake all earthly pleasures. God, God created the earth. And when God got all done creating the earth, what did he say? It is good. It is good. The earth is not evil. 
Do you understand that? God made it. We, we're the ones that twisted and perverted what God meant for good. Right? Get that. That, that is a dualistic, that is a dualistic, um, Gnostic idea that, that the natural realm is evil. It's not evil. Our perverted minds take what God meant for good and use it for evil. Right? Uh, I'm not, that's a whole rabbit hole I could go down. So get that out of your mind. Pleasure's good as long as pleasure isn't ruling you and you're ruling pleasure. Right? It, it, the earth is not evil. What he's talking about is filter the earth, filter your life on earth, not through the things of the earth, but through who I say you are and what I say is good and what I say is beneficial and what I, the boundaries that I put up for you. You understand that? Because I got news for you. We're not going nowhere. This is our home. There's a new heaven and a new earth. God, God lo so loved the earth, the world, that he sent Jesus. He's going to redeem this earth. We're not going. This is our this is our home. The new Jerusalem comes down to the earth. That's another rabbit hole we're going to go down. But uh, set your minds on things that are above, not on things that are on the earth. Holy Spirit here is telling us that we are to set our minds on things that are above. Now, Holy, what Holy Spirit is saying here, when you set your minds on things above, he's not talking about NASA or Space Force or stuff, stuff like that. That's not, that's not above enough. He's talking spiritually. We are to seek those things above in the spiritual realm. It's a higher way of living. It's a higher way of seeing. It's higher expanding our minds to see more than what we can see with our five physical senses. We set our minds on things that are above. Remember, remember what we've seen in Romans chapter 8. We are told to live according to the Spirit. We must set our minds on the things of the spirit, which are above this fallen mindset. Here in Colossians, we are being told the exact same thing we read in Romans. We are to set our minds on the things of the spirit, not natural things like our flesh or our circumstances. You got any circumstances happening in your life? What circumstances are happening in your life? Where's your mindset on? Are your mindset on the spiritual things, what God says about your circumstances? Are you rejoicing in all things? Again, I say rejoice. What, what, what if in the midst of calamity and everybody drawing back, God's wanting you to prosper and expand? Where's your mindset on? Are your minds set on the flesh and our circumstances, or are they above? Colossians, verse three. For you have died. You have died. You have died. So stop trying to crucify yourself. Stop trying to die to self. Self has died. It's just that you don't, you're setting your mind on the wrong thing. You have died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is your life, <laughs> appears, then you will also appear with him in glory. See, so now after telling us to set our, seek and set our minds on the things that are above, 
it goes on to tell us some things that are true in the spiritual realm. You have died in Christ, you've been hidden in Christ, and Christ is your life now. We are hidden in Christ, where, and where is Christ seated? He's seated in heavenly places at their Father's right hand. Verse 4 says that we, we are to see that Christ is our life. And although he is seated in heaven, he is, we, he is connected to our spirits through the Holy Spirit. This is amazing. Your life, the very life of Jesus Christ, is flowing into your spirit constantly. Because if it didn't, guess what? You wouldn't have everlasting life. You'd have everlasting death. For you have died. Do you know, do you know that uh, for the believer, you die once, but you're born twice? But the unbeliever is born once and they die twice. When we set our minds, we flip the switch on our risen king, the law of the spirit of life flows into our soul and into our body. We experience life and peace, shalom, shalom, sozo, sozo, the salvation of the Lord in our whole entire being. We experience this life, the life of God. This is, this is salvation. Salvation comes from the life of Jesus, not the death of Jesus. See, the problem with many people is they missed, missed this. They missed what I'm, we're teaching here because it's so simple. It's so simple. It's got, they think in their religious minds, it's got to be harder than this, Jed. There's got to be something i got to do. They're, they're, uh, i I, I, I got to earn it some way. I, I, you, you're talking about all these years of me working to be spiritually mature and trying to, to uh, elevate myself to become more holy and, and, and more righteous and, and, and sustain from, from the things of this world. All of that, all of that stuff that I take so much pride in, it, 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 it doesn't mean a thing. Yep, that's exactly what Paul came to, revelation of. Religion tries to make things much more complicated than they actually are. That's what happens when man works to serve God in their flesh. Man-made religion serves God in the flesh, but the just shall live by faith. Verse 6, or 5. Put to death, therefore, that, put to death, therefore, what is earthly in you. Sexual immorality, impurity, passion, evil desire, and covetousness, which is idolatry. So now, he's telling us in verse 5 to do something. But we must keep in context with what we just read. Many, many Christians read this, and they're not spiritually minded in w when they read it. They're carnally minded. They're, they're fleshly minded. They read this, and they think that they must kill. We must kill ourselves. Because it says, put to death. Right? Because they identify themselves in sexual immorality. They identify themselves in impurity. They identify themselves in passions, in evil desires, in covetousness, in idolatry. That's their identity. And you're believing a lie. Your life is now in Christ Jesus. You are one spirit with him. You have been made righteous. You've been made holy. See, so you're identifying with this because you're, uh, you're looking at this scripture in a carnal mindset. Not a spiritual mindset. We are now alive in Christ. But because we don't believe what is true in the spirit, we resort back to religious schemes. We're that dog chasing its tail. 
When Jesus, God's up there saying, you already got it. Religious people resort to willpower to kill fornication and evil desires that rise up in our flesh. And where do they end up? They end up right back in, with Paul in Romans chapter 7. Doing the things they don't want to do and not doing the things that they want to do. Finally crying out, wretch of a man that I am, who will deliver me from this body of death? The pivotal word. The pivotal word. Pivotal word. Is therefore. What's it there for? Whenever you see the word therefore, you have to find out why it's there for. Therefore connects this verse to the ones that preceded it. Right? Therefore, therefore, the way that we are to put to death our members on the earth is by doing what we were told to do in verses 1 and 2. How do we put to death the members which are in the earth? How do we um, put to death evil desires? By trying really, really hard? By punishing ourselves? By asking God to take it from us over and over and over again, begging and begging and begging? Anybody been there? Come on, I think we all have. We've all went through Romans chapter 7. No, none of this is how we get there. Get rid of it. How do we? By setting our minds on the things that are above. What is true in the spiritual realm. What is true in Christ Jesus. When we do this, we flip the switch. And the law of the spirit of life will start to flow into your life. Into your soul. Into your body. And guess what happens? The law of sin and death is turned off. This is true. If you've ever been to a, let's, a Christian um, night of worship concert or something like that, if you've ever been to a crusade, if you've ever been to a multi-day um, um, church service or conference or something like that, how many promise keepers, people went to promise keepers, they come back, they were so, they were so energized, they're so pumped up, they're, they're believing God for anything. Life is great. Then a couple weeks go by, and it just, where to go? Where to go? Did, did it disappear? Did God just want me to experience that for a weekend and then go back to my crummy life for the rest of the, rest of the time? What changed? Did God change? No, you did. You spent all that time thinking about things that are above. You spent all that time worshiping God and, and hearing about who you are in the spirit and the freedom that you have in Christ Jesus. You spent all that time setting your minds on the things of the spirit. But then you leave that, and, and, and what did that do? It changed your outlook on life. It changed your outlook on your, your marriage. It changed your outlook on your job and your future. All these things, it, ch it changes you. You're, you're even happier. You're energized, right? Depression is gone. And what, and, and what happens? We come back and we're no longer setting our minds on the things of the Spirit. We're no longer setting our mind on the things that are above. And the, the law of the Spirit of life is turned off. Because God turned it off? No, because you turned it off. And the law of sin and death starts in operation again. You see that? Let's look at the corresponding verse 
in Romans. In Romans chapter 8, verse 13, it says, For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. And your carnal mind just says, See, I need to put to death the deeds of the Spirit or the deeds of the, flesh, of the body. I got to I got to do something. I got I I have to put to death those evil desires. You missed something. Let's look at this again. It's this word right here. If by the spirit if by the spirit you put to death the deeds of the body. This isn't a religious scheme. He's saying the exact same thing. How do you put to death the deeds of the body? By the Spirit. This tells us how to put to death, um, death the, mem the members of our body, or as Romans stated, the deeds of the body. It is by the Spirit. It does not merely say that you put to death the deeds of the body. It says by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body. This is a huge, huge difference. Do you know how many books I just wiped off the Christian bookstore shelf? When you set your mind on the things of the Spirit, the Spirit will flow into your soul and body and put it to death for you. The law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set us free from the law of sin and death. You might be thinking, this just sounds too easy. It just sounds too easy. This is the gospel. Awake. Awake to the good news. The good news that is almost too good to be true. It's just too good. When you accept Jesus as your Savior and Lord, all you did was take your eyes off yourself and put them fully on Him. Right? Did you do anything to earn your salvation besides go from a navel gazer to a sun gazer? And when you did that, the greatest transformation in the entire universe happened. You went from a sinner to saint, from unrighteous to righteous, from unholy to holy, from dead to alive. Why would you think that living out these new creation realities would be any different? Why would it be more complicated? Because man-made religion complicates it. I read a story. You guys might have heard this story before, but it's very fitting with these scriptures that we just read. Um, there's a gentleman named Sir Frederick Hanley Page. You ever hear of that guy? He was a early aviation pioneer. And once he was in Midway, in the Midway flight, not the Battle of Midway, he was Midway in flight, and he heard a noise. And he couldn't place that noise. But the more he listened to it, he realized what it was. He had a hijacker. Someone snuck on his plane before it took off. And it was the sound of a rat gnawing on wires in his instrument panel. And he thought, what am I going to do? There's a rat in here. And if it gnaws through some of these delicate wires, it could cause me to lose control of this plane and I could crash. See, the problem was he couldn't get up from his pilot seat. He couldn't, he couldn't get up and leave 
flying the airplane. So as he thought about this or what he could do, all of a sudden he just grabbed the joystick and just pulled back on it. And he climbed higher and higher and higher and higher and to the point where it was getting very difficult for him to breathe. And he stayed at that altitude and then until all of a sudden he heard the gnawing stop. See, what he did is he ascended to a higher altitude that that rat could not sustain itself. Where the, where the, because of the lack of oxygen, the rat suffocated to death. That's how you deal with the rats in your life. The spiritual rats that are gnawing at you and trying to take you down, trying to hinder God's amazing plan for your life. Each one of us, God has an amazing plan, and it doesn't change. Do you know that? It doesn't change. We share this on Zoom. I don't know if it quite came across, but the promises of God are yes and amen. They never, ever change. When God formed you in your mother's womb, he had a, a, a plan and a destiny, a destiny for each one of us. And you might sit here thinking, I just screwed up my life too much. I've done too much. You know what? It never changed. When, when, when they failed to enter into the promised land through their unbelief, 40 years later, they show up to the exact same place, and guess what? God says, I've given it to you. It's in your hand. Nothing's changed. Are you going to go in? Are you going to believe me now? Or are you going to go in and, and take what I have given you? Those rats, those spiritual rats in our life are just trying to take us down. They're hindering from what God really wants to do in our life. But the good news is God never changes. God never changes. In Colossians chapter 3, verse 1, again it says, If you, if then you have been crucified, oh, excuse me, if then you have been raised with Christ, seek the things that are above where Christ is. Seated at the right hand of God, set your mind on those things that are above, not on things that are on the earth. It's time to go higher. It's time to go higher in our minds. It's time to go higher in our thinking. We need to, we need to take those things, those, those things, those rats, we got to take those rats right up to the throne of God where Christ sits. And when we set our minds on the things above where Christ sits at the right hand of God, those rats will suffocate and die. We don't have to kill our rats ourselves. We don't need to call a holy man to do a rat extermination. We just need to make a decision. A decision to go higher. A decision to go higher in the spirit. And when we go higher in the spirit, the spirit itself will kill those rats. Amen. That's good. In Romans chapter 8, verse 13, in the Amplified Version, it says, even, this isn't right. This is Romans chapter 6, verse 11. Sorry about that. Even so, consider yourselves to be dead to sin. Well, there's, there's somewhere to set your mind. I say something kind of jokingly, but it's not jokingly. You say, Chad, if, 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 if I'm a new creation in Christ Jesus, if I'm just like Jesus, why do I still sin? And I say, that's a good question. You should ask yourself that more often. Even so, consider yourself to be dead to sin. That, that is a higher, above way of thinking. That's set in your mind on the spirit, not on the things of the earth. And your 
let's read this again. Even so, consider yourselves to be dead to sin and your relation to it broken, but alive in God in unbroken fellowship with him in Christ Jesus. Unbroken fellowship with God. That you're in Christ Jesus. You have, you, you have severed all ties to sin. You, you, you're not even in a relationship with it. You know what it means to be dead to sin? Have you ever said, that person, that person's dead to me. I know you guys never said that. But what does it mean when you say, that person's dead to me? It means you disown the, another person. You, you, you're saying that they, they, they are no longer in existence. All remembrance of the person is removed. You refuse to even think about them. All the pictures are taken down and thrown in the fire. Never, their name is to never be named again. There's a lot of believers that their whole Christian experience is naming over and over again what sinners they are. All thoughts of them are to be avoided. Why? Because they're dead to you. In Psalms chapter 31 verse 12 it says, I have been forgotten like one who is dead. I have become a broken vessel. And what, he, what he's saying there is, is, is that I've been disowned to, to where I have no value to anybody because I'm like a dead person. What does that mean? That means if you tie that back to even so consider yourselves dead to sin, that means sin has no value. It doesn't... It, 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 it has no worth. We don't even consider it. It's gone. Awake to righteousness and sin not. <laughs> the Bible makes such sense when you, you get your mind off of things that, see, we spend most of our time in that place of, well, let's define what really is um, sexual immorality. Let's, let's define really what, what is envy? What is idolatry? What, what are evil desires? Let's spend all our time thinking about those things. How do we get rid of those things? This, these are what those things are, and this is what they look like in our modern lives. And let's spend all our time, how do we get out of those, those, those bondages and, and, and the strongholds and those things in our life? You're dead to it! This is what it means to be dead to sin. It means you do not focus on it anymore. But unfortunately, most church services, that's all they focus on. Can I have the worship team come back up? I mean, this we should have a reason to worship. See, to be made, to be made alive to someone. See, we're dead to sin, but we're alive to Christ. To be made live to someone. That's like the first date. You come alive, right? Oh my goodness, I didn't even know life until I met this person. The birds are singing. The sunset is so beautiful. I mean, look, look at the trees. They're so green. The sky's so blue. A lot of you experienced that when you met Jesus. Why? Because you were made alive to him. It means that you put all your focus and your attention on that person that has been made alive to you in your life. It's something, that, you know, I, I, there's a saying that I say, I said quite often, it says, God never asks us to do anything that he first doesn't do himself. Do you realize that we have always been the focus of his affection? 
everything that he's ever done, the cross, everything was not for him, it was for us. We, he's wanting us to become alive unto him because he's always living towards us. That, 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 that the law of the spirit of life is constantly flowing, flowing from the throne of grace. That Jesus said that from our very being will flow rivers of living water. Where do you think that comes from? That comes from the throne. There's a river that flows from the throne, the river of what? Life. See, when you try to overcome sin and the flesh in your own power, you put all your focus on it. When you're trying to overcome something in your own strength, in religious schemes, that's all you do is focus on your sin. I got to get rid of this. I got to get rid of this. What am I going to do? What am I going to do? I'm doing a good job. Oh, I fell back. That is not what it means to be dead to sin. That's what it means to be alive to sin. If you are dead to it, when temptation comes, you just turn your attention and your focus to what you're alive to. You turn it from the object of temptation and turn it fully unto the spiritual realm and what is true in the spirit. Truthfully, any believer that is continually having a carnal mindset, a, a carnal way of thinking, a carnal way of acting, is just, <laughs> you just look at them and you say, well, I know that their light switch isn't turned on. They're not, they're, they're, they're not, do you know temptation wouldn't be a, be a temptation? You know, Andrew Wall makes, makes, makes a comment. He says, you know what? I commit all the adultery that I want. I'm free in Christ. I, I can, can commit all the adultery that I want. I just don't want to. So he gives you new want tos. You, 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 a person that is, is constantly being falling into temptation is a person that is not a sun gazer. All we have to oh, it, and you're thinking, so what do you mean? I got I gotta I gotta constantly be thinking about Jesus? Yeah. You gotta constantly be thinking about Jesus and who you are and, and the kingdom of God that's that's expanding in this earth. It's getting bigger and bigger and bigger. The revelation, the sons and daughters of God are being revealed. It, it just, there's a, there's a whole awakening happening. Do you realize, do you realize the revelation of who we are in Christ that we have that our grandparents did not have? The church, Christianity is the largest largest kingdom on the face of the earth. It's the largest family. It's growing exponentially. It's just growing and growing. Don't read, don't believe the headlines. When they talk about the church is shrinking in the United States, it's the denominational churches that are shrinking. It's mainstream. Christian churches that are shrinking. The church is more alive, more powerful than it's ever been. Than it's ever been. There are more spirit-filled believers on the face of the planet than there has ever been at any time in all of history. That's awesome. We go from glory to glory. It gets gooder and gooder and gooder in Christ Jesus. If you are dead to it, when temptation comes, you just change your focus. You 
turn it fully unto the spiritual realm and what is true in the spirit and you turn it to Jesus seated at the right hand of God and by so doing that rat will be killed by the spirit but I'm telling you that that you you will have much less temptations the more you focus on the kingdom you know that's what Jesus preached that's what the disciples preached that's what Paul preached gospel of the kingdom it's a completely new way of living it's a completely new way of interacting with the earth it's the way that God intended from the very beginning when he placed Adam in the earth in fellowship in relationship with him that Adam would would rule and reign and have dominion on the earth in partnership with God and see things from God's spiritual perspective and then manifest that in the earth and church that is what we're doing now and guess what one day one day those sky will break in that second Adam Jesus Christ will make all things all things bow to the spiritual realm and what's true in the spiritual realm You believe it? You need to believe it. You need to believe that it's really that easy. It's really that easy. Let's praise Him. You've been listening to a message from Karis New Testament Church. For more information or to contact us, go to www.karisntc.org. And remember, you are deeply loved, highly favored, and destined to reign in Christ Jesus.